Hi everybody, I'm Scott and this is the Amazon Glow, uh, which at the time of making this video is available by invitation only. Not that I'm so special that I got an invitation, I just asked for one. Um, Amazon didn't send me this free of charge or anything. Uh, I had to sign up and uh, eventually bought it myself with my own money. So this is an unbiased review. I don't give a shit if this is good or not. That's uh, all on Amazon. And also, um, well, let me get into what this product is first, if you're not familiar with it. This thing is billed as an interactive projector and video calling thing designed for togetherness with 10 grim bits. I don't know if this was inspired by the uh, horrible, horrible global pandemic or just, you know, Amazon's visualization of a need for people to be together otherwise. But in any case, this is the unit here. It looks like some kind of picture phone from the 1990s. I don't know. The design is kind of questionable. Looks like a giant cell phone from the 90s, but anyway, um, except for the screen on it. And my understanding is at the top here, it has a projector and also a camera, and then another front facing camera here, which you can see, and then uh, this nice man. And so it enables this nice girl to interact with physical items here and have the camera up here detect her movements and en enable this old man to. Uh, interact with her using this. I don't know if I'm being very clear, and frankly, I don't know exactly how it works. That's what we're here to find out. But um, her arm's really green. Oh, her arm's really green because of the projector. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, it would do that. As you can see, as of right now, it's selling for 250 bucks, and can only ship to the United States. I don't know why. And uh, if you want to pause it and take a look at this, there you go. It includes one year of Amazon Kids Plus, which I do not need as I do not have kids. Uh, but I get it for free, at least for testing this thing. And so it's a physical meets digital type thing. It comes with Tangram bits, which I think is a thing that I don't know about that exists otherwise. But, uh, yeah, we'll look at those. And so if the, uh, child moves those bits, they're moved in digital space as well. So the adult can interact with them remotely. Uh, presumably this is not for like weird interactions. This is for like grandparents and kids or, you know, people who live far apart from each other. Um, not for like soliciting minors on the internet. I assume they have protection against that in some way, but we'll find out about all the parental controls and crap as we go along. So yeah, there's the unit. Here's some kids playing with it. Now they're playing with an old lady instead of an old man. So that's fun. Um, the old man's back and you can play this card game, which is, you know, I thought we were trying to get girls away from, like, the princess and pink crap. Which we should. We need more girls in STEM and not princess land or whatever. Um, there's a boy doing boy stuff. Very very stereotypical. That's cool. Um, an old lady and a young boy. And so this is, this is their sales pitch. I mean, you can read it. I'm not going to read it to you. And I'm scrolling through it kind of fast, so you can just pause it if you want to know what's the deal. So it's, so it's very simple to use because, uh, you know, old people are going to have to set this up. So, uh, yeah, seems pretty straightforward, right? This is one, two, three. Although three isn't really part of the connecting process. That's start bonding with your grandchild or whatever. Um, eight inch screen in the front. This is the front facing camera. It's got a speaker, volume buttons, power port, blah, blah, blah. And here's some technical specifications. A 720p camera. Blech. What was this, 2004? And then some recommendations, which are not my recommendations because I'm not signed in. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's what this is. Like I said, I don't have kids, so really I'm more interested in the hardware itself. So I'm going to be doing a teardown on this just to see what's inside. And also to get an idea of whether or not this would be useful in a business sense. I mean, from the pictures online, it doesn't really look like a kid's toy. In fact, it says this is not a toy somewhere in that material. But, um, yeah, it looks more like it's some kind of appliance, like it should be used for business. Um, I don't know. There could be applications for that. I don't think Amazon allows applications uh, for business on their platform. It's really dedicated towards kids, but we'll find out as we go. So uh, stage, stage one is the unboxing of this box. Th these are the Tangram bits, by the way. We'll look at those last. They sound like puzzle pieces. I think they're just shaped uh, pieces of wood or some crap. 
Oh, one interesting thing, if you turn the box on its side, you can see product name, Amazon product. They're really uh, not being very specific there. So I guess this is, I don't know, top secret or whatever. I'm kind of into the whole like Amazon day one products, whatever they're called. I did a teardown and almost did a review of the Amazon dressing stick. I forgot what it's called already. This was years ago. Um, it had some cool hardware and it was nice and compact, but the product it's itself made like no sense whatsoever. And I hated the concept. So that's why I didn't end up doing a review of it. Okay. So Amazon glow caution, electrically operated product. Cool. Yeah, because kids never use anything electrically operated nowadays. I'm going to get the full struggle from this camera. Okay. just It's just a very tight fit. So, uh, yeah, it comes with this nice lifting out of the box strap, which I do appreciate. And uh, there it is. It's kind of the same on all sides. Great. Now you know. Um, no, it's got adult supervision required, not a toy. Well, that sounds fun for kids right away. I just hit that camera. I think I did. Oh, yet more Amazon Glow branding. Wow. That was just, just, just tight. Nice, tight packaging. Here's what we have inside. A mat... Presumably, this is not full of Tecmon. This is uh, just, well, a literal mat. It's like a rubberized um, silicone feeling thing. Very nice. This is presumably the surface for the projector to project upon, because who knows what color your table is. If you have a black table, I suppose that would kind of suck. And here's, oh, it's, it's not as, oh my god, this thing's freaking huge. Pretty lightweight, though. Not as heavy as it looks, but... Oh man, this is like at least 12 inches long. I wish I had a banana for scale. Um, Sharpie marker for scale? There you go. Everyone knows what size that is. Or uh, scissors that come in variable sizes. Useful. Oh, it's got a uh, cardboard hood on it. The shit, this thing is like stuck to the whole side of it. I've never seen, I've never quite seen anything packaged like this with the... Uh, magician's hood covering it that's taped all around the sides like oh there we go it's like protective film taken to no another level entirely jesus okay this is incredibly adhesive and cumbersome to take off i guess this is why they say it's not for kids because i'm an adult and i'm wrecking this nice and glossy though looks kind of evil. I like it. I mean, I don't like it as a kid's thing. It looks horrible, but, uh, oh, okay. Well, right away I see, uh, this little feature, a slide that covers and uncovers the front facing camera. I like that big on privacy in that way. Um, on the back, not a hell of a lot, just a power jack. And then if you look up in here, you can see the projector and presumably another camera. Is that also open and close? Oh yeah, that also opens and closes with the same, same lever. Cool. And then on the side here, in addition to the lever, we've got a power button and presumably volume buttons. And here's the speaker on the bottom. And that is it. I mean, it's a very simple piece of kit as far as user interface goes. I mean, I'm assuming the touchscreen will... I'm a, well, is that a touchscreen? I don't even know. We'll find out. And here we have some Amazon Glow literature and important information. I'll just preview that for you in a second. And a uh, nice feeling power adapter, as all Amazon power adapters are. They do make... I've never actually opened one up or really run any tests on it, but they always have a nice feel to them. They're nice and heavy and well-made. Like the ones that come with the Echoes, or at least the original Echo. And stuff like that. This is a... Universal input, 100 to 240 volts at 1 amp. Output is 12 volts at 2.5 amps. And it had a 30 watt rating. Oh, it says 30 watts there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the contents of the box. Comes with these form-fitting um, cardboard 
pieces. It's not the luxurious packaging that you get with some products, but um, you know, I, who really, who cares? The, the packaging is never the important part, but they did put some work into it. I appreciate that. What did that, oh, whatever. Um, I don't need this keyboard. So just for posterity's sake, let's take a look at the enclosed literature. Amazon Glow, set up your Amazon Glow. What's in the box? Well, we know what's in the box. We just open the box. Place it on a hard surface like a table or countertop. Good idea. Place the mat in front of it. Great. Plug it in. Wow. Cool. And then important information. I mean, this has to be important. Oh, my God. Oh, this is just disclaimers and shit. Like, don't electrocute yourself. Don't feed this to children. Don't let children lick the power adapter. Um, it complies with the FCC's rules on devices that interact with children or who cares what we really want to see is the device itself and to aid with the device or rather to aid with the setup i've got two tablets i've got one tablet to simulate the old person on the other end of the connection and then one tablet so i could show you the setup process and they're kind of dirty well they have fingerprints on them as all tablets do unless you have like the cleanest fucking hands in the world um, you're never not going to have fingerprints on your tablets. My guess is this is going to be somewhat problematic to record off what's going on here, but uh, I'll do my best. That should be in focus now anyway. Okay, so I've got the device positioned on camera. It's not plugged in yet, but I do have it plugged into the back of the unit, uh, the power adapter that is, and I'm going to plug it into electrical supply uh, now. And let's see what happens. Ah, Amazon logo. Good. It's showing up on camera nicely. The screen's bright enough. It's always a concern. Ooh. Oh, a balloon. Look what they've done for us. Amazon Glow. It just made a noise you couldn't hear. It went boom. Download the Amazon Glow app to get started, which is something I did not do in advance um, on the correct tablet. I did it on the tablet that's supposed to simulate the old person because presu presumably they'll need it on their end. But I didn't install it on this tablet, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the Glow is showing a QR code to download the app. It also says you can find it in the App Store, which is the way I'm going to do it. Because there is absolutely no reason to scan the QR code. It's very easy to find. You just go to the Play Store if you're using an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, you can just go to whatever Apple Store is called, the App Store. Oh, they call it the App Store because it both has apps on it and app is part of the word Apple. I just realized that. Am I an idiot, or did no one else know that? Well, it doesn't matter. Um, now, now I know. Unless I didn't do it on purpose, in which case that's irrelevant. But anyway, I've typed in Amazon Glow. It came up as the first thing, and you install it. Yay. It's a 50 megabyte download, so it doesn't take all that long. Amazon Glow is best on a tablet. Well, good. It looks like you're using a mobile phone. No, th this is a tablet, dude. But thanks for asking. Sign in with Amazon. I want to just uh, cut past this as I put in my Amazon information. Yeah, yes, I got to enter my OTP. Now, if you don't have two-factor authentication enabled on your Amazon account, I would highly recommend you do that. Nope, that's me. Let's continue. Hi, Scott. What would you like to do? Set up my Amazon Glow device or connect with someone who has a device? So connect with someone who has a device is what we'll be doing on the other tablet, but now we would like to set it up. Um, I used my middle initial as my last name, but that's fine. I'm sure it's just a minor inconvenience. Continue. Uh, continue. Oh, profile images are required. P please take a profile pic so kids can recognize you. <laughs> Doesn't sound creepy at all. Allow camera access. Oh, for fuck's sake. Allow. Um, I have both cameras on this blocked off with tape for security purposes, so... Just gonna take a blank picture. No, that's kind of boring. Um, this is kind of offensive to my Android sensibilities, but th these are iPhone or iPad style buttons. Some Apple developer developed this interface. Not that it matters. It's just like you break the Android look and feel for Android users just because you think you're so fancy. Um, here, this is apparently from an album, art. Uh, yeah, let's use this image. I like that. 
Okay, I don't even know what album that is. It's on my device, apparently. But, uh, cool. I'm sure someone in the comments will know. Uh, oh, okay. I thought it was going to get mad at me. Start device setup. Enable Bluetooth. Continue. Connect to your device. Continue. Allow it to access my location. Why does it need my location? Every single app nowadays needs my freaking location. Select the glow device. How many glow devices do you think I have in my house? I mean, okay, it's fair that it should ask. It's just like, um, I'll put it on my guest Wi-Fi just for funsies. Oh, now on the Amazon Glow device, it's saying connecting to Wi-Fi. Downloading updates, of course. Of course it has to download updates. And this is an unfortunate orientation for a filming like a product review because it's very tall and like, well, the screen is wide. I mean, unless you're using TikTok, in which case the screen should be this way, in which case it would work fine. But uh, this isn't TikTok, so I'm so old. Every time I hear TikTok, I go, you don't stop in my head. And I bet the kids using TikTok don't even know what the f I'm talking about. Why would they? No one needs that information. Okay, I guess while this is doing an update, this wants me to add my kids. Um, huh, I don't have kids. So, Aber... Na How do you spell Abernathy? Oh, there. Ah, autocomplete. Wonderful. Abernathy. Birth date. Um, you, you serious? You want me to enter the... Can I just... Oh, good. I kind of select the year that way. Okay, I was worried like I was going to have to scroll back through all the years. How old is Abernathy? Let's say Abernathy's 11. He was born in 2010, right? I mean, that seems like a reasonable age for a kid to use this. And, oh my god, what do you know? They were born the day I'm shooting this video. It's their birthday today. That's cool. Good old Abernathy. Oh, they got a dog as their profile photo. Um, I'm not going to add no Should I add another kid just so we can see what happens if there are multiple kids in the system? Yes. Um, Gerelda. It's not a real name. She will have been born on the 4th of July. Like in that song that also TikTok kids won't know. And uh, she will be the older of the two children, born in 2008. So she's 13. We'll add the kid. She also got a puppy dog as her profile photo. Great. Woof, woof. Now to continue. Your permissions will apply the following prof. Oh my god. It's going to notify my wife on her Amazon app that I added kids to our account. And she's going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Eh, that's hilarious. Ugh, enter your password. Verify that you're an adult. Enter the CVV code on your credit card ending in the part I'm going to have to blur out. Let me turn the camera back to the Amazon Glow, which is still installing. Apparently, to download the updates now, it just says it may take up to 20 minutes to install the updates. 20 minutes, great. Now I need to find that freaking credit card. Okay, I've entered my CV2 code, parental consent. I don't know why you have to prove you're an adult by entering your CVV code, because, like, I don't know, who else is doing this? Is the kid going to, like, take the tablet and, like, squirrel away in the room with the Amazon Glow and, like, pretend they're a parent on the Amazon account? Like, if I know the Amazon account password, chances are I'm not the freaking kid. Don't give your kids your Amazon password. That's just dumb. Anyway, uh, continue. Continue. I'll be the only adult who can use this. Your Amazon Glow includes one year of Amazon Kids Plus. Great. Allow microphone access. Okay. Sure. I thought this was the tablet that's going to just set this up, and the other tablet's going to communicate with the kid. To make or receive a call, go to your settings and enable camera and microphone perm permissions. Okay. thought we already did that, but... It already has camera and microphone. Why is it telling me that, then? Okay. Take a video tour of the app. No. And then there's a whole bunch of activities here. Ooh. Wow. Probably this is probably all copywritten, so like, am I going to get an Amazon, I mean, an Amazon, a YouTube copyright strike for displaying this crap? Really hope not. Recommended books includes Fifty Shades of Grey. 
What? Nah, I'm just kidding. It doesn't. Oh, it just went into a reboot. I missed it because I was fucking with the cameras. But uh, it apparently finished the update, so let's see what happens. I've got this a little bit rearranged. So now I have the mat in front of this. And we can kind of see what's going on here. Oh, it's doing stuff. Okay, we got the balloon again. Okay, it's going through its startup sequence again. Oh, it's displaying something on the mat. The two main parts of the Amazon Glow are the touchscreen display and the projection space. Place the included mat in front of the device on a flight to together. Table. Scroll to the books row and tap Choose on a card to place on the canvas. Try paintbrushes, colors, and stickers. Games are all found Start here. an activity session with your family and friends by selecting them from your contact list. New adventures are straight ahead. Okay, after that whole intro spiel, it lets me choose Abernathy or Geralda. It's a lovely name that I made up. Um, Amazon, you might want to fix that. Poor Abernathy is just Abernath. E. There's, there's plenty of room for it. But anyway, um, and they're both dogs, which is kind of insulting. Um, my apologies for the washed out video. It's, it's fairly bright in here in the studio, whatever the hell you want to call the basement. And um, so the projector came out kind of washed out, even though like the tablets come out fine. They're significantly brighter than the reflected image from the uh, tiny LED projector in the top of this. So before we do start, I just want to see what's in the settings menu. Uh, Wi-Fi sounds. Yeah, leave the volume maxed out. Date and time. Wow, that goes into tiny formatting. Um, select time zone. I might as well select my correct time zone. I just defaulted to... Uh, UTC or GMT rather. About your device. Ooh. Actually, I'm probably going to blur this out because, like, I don't know if that's. And look, there's a back arrow and then a back arrow. Both of them work. Wait, what does this back arrow do then? Oh, that got rid of that. A little buggy, I guess. That's. Uh... Then Wi Fi just lets you select another network. The font gets really tiny for some of these settings. I mean, presumably the kids wouldn't mess around with this. How do you stop the kids from messing around with this? Because the kid's definitely going to mess around with that. Anyway, let's start. Okay, so it's displaying stuff on this mat. Um, oh, okay, so you can actually interact that way. That's, that, that's impressive. It was actually a solid button push. Can I make this mat look any freaking better? Um... Okay, with some Valiant messing around with the camera settings, I kind of got it to uh, display the mat all right. Whoops. Okay, that just upset it. I shouldn't have put that thing down there. Um, anyway, so I horsed around with the cameras a bit, or at least this camera. Got it to display a little bit better in all this light. And um, got it lined up so it's uh, the right way up for your field of view and not sideways. Although it's still now it's at an angle for me. Well, which it was the whole time. Point being, this is what the setup looks like now. Great. I mean, this is quite responsive. This mat is not active at all. It's just a white mat. Like, you could probably just use a white piece of cardboard or card stock or just do this on a white table that's not overly reflective, I'm going to guess. Um, we'll play tic-tac-toe with the pencil. I know I'm supposed to take the middle. I'm just uh, seeing if this is drawing okay. Um, well, O will take the middle. Yeah, it was a draw. What do you know? Yeah, I mean, pretty good tracking. Um, okay, I'm, I'm really not doing the right thing here because I'm doing this kind of single player right now, but... Oh, that takes a screenshot of what I just did here. That's cool. Vacuum? Ah, it's the eraser tool, but it's a vacuum. I kind of, you know, I kind of like this. This is, this is kind of cool. Place an object on the mat. Oh, I should point out, by the way, this banding, like you can see these scrolling lines and it's kind of like a little color, like yellow here and then purple in the middle. It's not like that to the naked eye. That's just how the camera's picking it up, especially because I'm kind of have, have the camera setting at its limit. 
Um, this actually looks very nice to the human eye, so I apologize for those not-so-nice bands going through there. Oh, I think I was supposed to... Okay. Do that, and then scan it. Okay, cool. Um, oh yeah, well, there's the scissors. Not very good iteration of them, but... Hey, there's my scissors that I just put there. I mean, this would be really cool for kids, to be fair. Like, of a certain age, like you scan in an action figure or some other toy you really like, and then you can present it on here and move it around and put it in scenes and stuff. Now, the thing is, I just realized... You have to be a kid of reasonable reading age. Because it said, like, do you want to save before exiting? And, it, and then... I forgot what it said, yes or no or whatever. But if you're, like, a... It said, this is not suitable for children under three. So if you're a four-year-old... Most four-year-olds, I don't think, can read. What kids can read? What, what age? I don't even know. But, I, like, a three-year-old isn't going to read. Right? Like, play a game of tic-tac-toe. Now, granted, it has the symbology of... No. It has it has a symbology of tic-tac-toe, so, like, a kid would know that. Create characters out of these shapes. Who can connect dots the fastest? Not what does the fox say? All right, now, real quick, uh, before I go any further, let me look at this from the point of view of great-grandpa Tipsy, who's going to be using the other ends. This would be the device that the adult on the other end of the connection would use to interact with the kid. So that's the example that we're doing here. I have a separate Amazon account to test this out, so let me just log in as that. Can I disable this projector? Maybe if I turn off the camera? Oh, yeah. Just a quick side note, if you close the privacy... That's loud. If you close the privacy shutter, it also turns off the projector. So it kind of... But it leaves the screen on on the device. So that's a good way just to turn the projector off. Okay, we're ready for Great Grandpa Drunk to log in. Okay, this account is under Scott Teller, which is because I'm telling you about stuff. You don't need to know that. So now we want to connect with someone who has a device. So again, we need a... Or they call it caregiver profile setup. That's weird. This is a weird choice of words, because you'd think the kid's caregiver would live with them and therefore be able to play games with them in person. And this is really for, like, remote playing with kids. It's supposed to be more for, like, like I said, grandpa drunk or, like, great uncle silly or whatever. Okay, there we go. Allow microphone access, of course. Allow it to record audio. Great. No contacts. You need someone to add as a contact. I guess from the kids' side of this, you have to add the other adult as the contact. Okay, so now where do... It? Family and friends. There we go. Add family and friends. Invite someone new. First name, Scott. I'm assuming this information has to match up with the information the other... Amazon accounts so that like weird adults can't. Okay, I don't know. I don't remember the phone number I used for this. Who can they communicate with? Abernathy. Abernathy calls them, and Gerelda calls them or calls me. Um, drunk. Cause she's a little older, so she gets me. Okay, next, send a download link. Oh, okay. It says Scott Teller has joined. Continue. Hey, okay. Scott Teller showed up with the profile pic that I took with this tablet, so we're apparently linked up. Great. And the contacts have not shown up on this app yet. Let me just close out of it and then go back in. Is tablet not bright as bright as it can go? No, it is. Okay. Ah, Gerilda. Okay, cool. So I think I think we're on our way here. Okay, so again, this tablet is Grandpa Drunk's tablet, and obviously this is the machine itself. I'm going to open the privacy shutter. Yeah. Hey, there's Grand. 
Okay, it's looking. Ah, incoming call from Abernathy. I will answer. Okay, I've had to turn down the volume on both devices to keep it from echoing horribly. The video quality is absolutely horrible. It's like nice on the screen of the device, which I'm not blocking with my head. But then if I move over slightly, it's absolutely horrible on this. Like it's like very low bandwidth. Wow. Yeesh. Like see how pixelated that is? Like that should look like this. But instead it's like super pixelated. Wow. Okay, and then at the bottom of Grandpa Drunk's tablet, it says view Abernathy's space, which presumably is what's showing up on the projector platform. And for that, we need to change orientation. Now, by the way, I just, I'm trying to adjust the cameras to get a shot of both the uh, tablet and the projected image. This looks a little fuzzy. It's in focus. It actually doesn't look that clear. Like, the, it's very pixelated because this is a pretty low-resolution projection. Um, I don't know the actual specs of it. If I find them out, I'll put them here. I mean, it's fine for what it is. Don't get me wrong. It just, it's not the camera. It's, uh, it is quite pixelated and fuzzy. By the way, this is saying slow internet connection at the top, which is weird because there's no reason it should be slow. By the way, the image this is showing is this tablet just looking straight up. So that's, that's correct as far as what the image here is. It's just the cameras on the ceiling. Um, Oh, now it stops saying slow internet connection. That's good. Well, let's use the Tangram bits, which I didn't cover yet. Actually, let's just take a quick look at the Tangram bit set. I don't think it's going to be very exciting. They're just like um, little geometric shapes. Comes with a uh, piece of literature that just says how to use them, whatever. And these are the... Oh. It's not a box full of them. It just has a very shallow lip to it. Okay. So here are the Tangram bits. Great. And presumably these marks at the corners allow the vision system of this device to see where they are. So yeah, let's uh, solve puzzles using... Oh, it says by Amazon. So does that mean people are eventually... Or people, meaning other companies, they're going to be able to uh, create their own apps for this? I guess that's Amazon's dream. I don't think it's going to happen, but that's just my guess. Solve puzzles together using geometric shapes and watch your puzzles come to life as an animated character. Choose together mode. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Choose race mode. So let's start playing. Okay, and Grandpa Drunk's tablet also changed. And now remember, um, Grandpa, uh, the Abernathy can always see Grandpa Drunk on this camera. And Grandpa Drunk can see Abernathy on this camera. I mean, on this display. And it's still loading. I'm guessing in the background it's downloading this game. Uh, this game might not ship on the device itself. Okay. Tap on a world to get started. All right. Uh, let's clear that out. Let's see what worlds we have. Um, I can't hit that X. Can Grandpa Drunk hit the X? Yeah, Grandpa Drunk can hit the X. But that doesn't make it disappear from Abernathy's. Oh, there we go. Uh, we have... Gingerbread, farm, blah, 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 unicorn. Oh, it scrolls pretty nicely. That's cool. Um, yeah, we'll go with dinosaurs. We could see if life finds a way to make this thing work. Okay, pick a puzzle. Let's do this bird-looking thing. Uh, we'll do it together. Find your pieces and put them here. Great, okay. I should be able to manage this as a grown adult. It's probably giving me audio feedback and saying stuff right now. It's just um, that will cause feedback via Grandpa Drunk's microphone. So, okay, so I guess these are Grandpa Drunk's pieces. I can't interact with those, but Grandpa Drunk can presumably move them. Yes, Grandpa Drunk can move them. Okay, cool. And rotate them. Okay, it happens in fairly real time. That's cool.
Yay, it exploded into a bird. And it gave me a high five. Oh, am I supposed to high five that hand with... What the hell does that mean? Clear the, oh, clear, oh, clear the tiles to finish. It's pushing the tiles away. I thought it was like trying to give Grandpa Drunk a high five. And Grandpa Drunk was supposed to give a high five on his tablet somehow. Okay. All right, well, that, that was fun. We, we made a bird. Um, Grandpa Drunk helped. Uh, can I go back, please? I want to get out of here. Okay, there, there we go. One of so oh, it keeps track of your progress. That's nice. And that one wasn't wordy. There was no, um, you didn't really need to know English to do that one. So I guess maybe these are probably for different age levels, I assume. But how do you know what age level is appropriate for each? Hmm. The sponge, SpongeBob SquarePants is still popular with kids, I mean. I know it's popular with like millennials or whatever. Or maybe even my people my age. I don't know. Okay, time to play Slapjack. Quickly flip over each card until you come to a jack. When you find one, slap it to collect a pile of play cards. Too slow when your opponent gets the cards. I'll play our okay, this sounds boring. Slapjack's loading up. So this is like... If you see a jack, be the first to slap it. Oh, it shows who clicked there. Okay, that's cool. Collect all the cards to win. Find out who goes first. Swipe up to flip the coin. Okay. That's cool. I go first. I mean, Abernathy goes first. Well, I'm both Abernathy and Grandpa Drunk, so... Swipe up to flip. Five. Tap to flip on Grandpa's. Why can Grandpa not swipe, but... Eh, whatever. See, one thing... This is a minor niggle about this interface. They should both be swipe, or they should both be tap. Because what's going to happen is, Abernathy is going to be like, Grandpa, just swipe up on the cards to make the cards go. And Grandpa's going to be like, I am swiping. It's just not working. I don't know what's going on. You know, because Grandpa probably didn't read the directions that said tap. So, like, it should be this. It should be uniform, in, in my humble opinion. And also, you shouldn't have to so violently swipe. But I guess kids tend to exaggerate their movements, so... That's a king. What happens if you slap it and it's not a jack? Nothing. Okay. Good to know. No. Oh, slap! Aha! I got all the cards. Okay. Well, this game is, is horribly boring. I mean, uh, good for kids, I guess. There is a settings button. Does that interact with settings on both? Oh, no. Grandpa can choose his sound effects and music. And then Abernathy can separately choose their sound effects and music. Is this like a report flag? Oh, I sure want to resign from the game. Yeah, Abernathy said, screw this. Even though Abernathy was winning. Ha! <laughs> Grandpa got a nice job. Because Abernathy pussed out. Ha <laughs> ha, sucker. You sure want to exit? Yes. Do we both have to confirm? Oh, I was already confirmed. Okay, and then we both have to... Oh, that's cool. So we both have to agree to exit the game. I like that. Alright, obviously I'm not going to go through every game on here. Uh, I just kind of want to see what a book format looks like. Is this anime? I can't even read that. Oh, Spider-Man. Oh, okay. The tiny thumbnail, I couldn't tell. Uh, fine, let's start reading. Oh, so this is going to be reading a book together. Which I guess is nice, you know. Grandpa Drunk doesn't usually get to read with Abernathy because they live in many different states. I mean, many states apart. They don't... Well, Grandpa Drunk has two different houses, one in Florida and one up north, so, you know, he is in many different states. Alright, so this is just like flipping through the book and you can talk about it, I guess. Can I, like, draw something? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I can be like, look, Grandpa, there's Spider-Man's head. Spider-Man's head, Grandpa. Grandpa, it's Spider-Man's head. And Grandpa could be like, I don't fucking care. Get the hell out of here, kid. Okay, great. So that's that's a book. A. Oh, I guess it reads it out loud, maybe. Wonderful. How do we exit this crap? Um, Spider-Man loves. Spider-Man loves. That sounds sketchy. Okay. And then there's a search function. What are you looking for? I 
and no, not that word. How old was Abernathy? Abernathy was 11. Abernathy can spell, actually. I know 11-year-olds can spell. Why did it come up with all this stuff? All this is about not spelling? Cool. Oh, they have Espanol books, too. Um, two of them, I guess. Well, maybe more if you didn't have the search on. But at least it's somewhat multilingual. I assume if they want, if they're deploying this across more countries, they would have different languages for different countries. Of course, the United States, Spanish is quite popular, so it makes sense to have Spanish language books in the U.S. edition of this. So, it's nice of them to include that. Well, anyway, I hope I've sort of given you an idea of how this is used and what it does. I would like to take it apart and see what's inside. I don't think it's going to be anything impressive. This is pretty much just like a tablet computer with a projector attached and a couple of cameras. Um, the only thing of interest might be the vision system in the Amazon dressing stick for costumes that I reviewed or tore down. Um, it had an Intel, these words, because I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, it had one of those, which uh, like an Intel Vision processing system. Um, I'm going to guess it says something similar to, you know, interpret the gestures and so forth. But let's see. Um, by the way, <laughs> so Grandpa Drunk uh, turned his tablet off and in the tiniest font in the world, it says Grand has turned their video off. Yeah, very hard to see. So... I mean, a couple of small, like, bugs in this, at least as far as... No, nothing major. I mean, so far it seems like a very competently well-put-together product. It's just... There's little things that just need refinement. But I guess I'm a beta tester. I paid $250 to beta test this thing for Amazon. So I guess I'm the sucker. Although it's a shame if I was beta testing this as a child. Um, frustrating. So fortunately I'm not. But again, uh, no major bugs. I mean, I didn't encounter anything horrible. It's just minor inconsistencies here and there. I frankly have no idea how to take this apart. It looks like on the bottom there may be some kind of screw under there. Oh, it's some kind of uh, programming or docking port. Okay. Aha! There are indeed... Ooh, this is like... Not just rubberized on this side, but then there's a piece of metal in there, too. And a very, well, relatively strong adhesive. That's going to make it difficult to put back on, because the metal kind of bent when I took it off. So, uh, yeah, well, whatever. I could always put just alternative rubber feet on this thing when putting it back together. Yep, more screws. Okay. Just to make it a little easier on myself, I'm going to put this on its side while I unscrew these screws. I have a feeling, I just get the impression from this case, that it's not going to be this simple. It's not going to be a matter of unscrewing these screws and then the whole thing's going to open up and show me all its secrets. I have a feeling this is going to require some prying and angst in order to get it open. In fact, I think these screws might only take off a metal plate that's on the bottom here, but not 100%. So, when in doubt, take them out. Because the worst thing is when you're disassembling something and it, you think it should pry apart and it doesn't. And it's just because you missed a screw in some really odd place or a really tiny screw that wasn't all that noticeable. And all the force you're using goes against the screw. I had that problem recently with the um, one net... Oh, this screw's just turning... Oh, that caused something internally to fall down. So those screws held something on internally. Yeah, this thing rattling around in there now. Uh, cool. Okay, well at least the screws up here, I'm going to guess, help liberate this faceplate. This shiny plastic, so... Or maybe re releases the back from the shiny plastic? Some Amazon engineer is watching this and being like, Haha, you fool! That's not how you take this apart. You idiot. 
And indeed, I am an idiot. Because I've loosened something internally and I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like my spudger should gain some purchase somewhere in here. Okay, there's screws at the bottom, so the bottom should be looser than this by now. Oh, I think there are screws under this, under this label. Shit. Oh yeah, there are two more screws under there. Ha <laughs> ha I have a feeling these are, this is just going to loosen more internal components, though. And not necessarily get me access to the internal components. No, that appeared to be solid. Okay. Maybe that'll help. Ugh. Despite moving those screws... Uh, despite removing those screws, there doesn't seem to be any play on this. Hmm. You know what, I don't think any of these screws are for holding the front on, because you can see the screw holes are no longer quite in alignment. And like these uh, screw holes, well the threads, like fell out altogether, and now this thing rattling around inside. So I think th these screws just hold the internal components in place, and don't actually hold the case together. So I think... The and you can see I chewed up the plastic pretty good already trying to get this open. I think this might either be glued or sonically welded together. Probably glued. So I might try taking a light heat gun to it and just see if it'll loosen up a little. But not too much heat because I don't want to damage the internal components. And then I'm just going to heat it in some arbitrary portion. And just see if I get any give in the material that's pretty warm like i was hoping for serviceability like if someone returns this to amazon they would have a way to, a non-destructive way of opening this up but it really doesn't appear to be the standard kind of like you know plastic hooks holding it together because there's no give between the, the shiny plastic and the matte plastic. It's almost as if it's just one giant molded piece. Now my other concern is maybe this front is more like a cell phone where this front and, um, bezel is supposed to come off. And that gives access to the interior? Maybe? Let's see if, we can, if maybe this corner comes up if it's just glued. Hmm. It's looking like that probably is the sort of correct way to get it open. Maybe. Um, but maybe not, because it's like not actually budging. And I also don't want to completely like deform and bubble the plastic. And this might not even be the correct way. I mean, it might not be glued on there. I don't know. Oh, that made a... Of course, the plastic's kind of deformable now, but that made a glue-releasing noise just now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's glued on there. That's for sure. There's a little adhesive strips. And I am discoloring the plastic a little from the heat, so... This is probably going to be a one-way trip for this thing. Oh yeah, really discoloring the plastic. Yeesh. Looks like there's some sort of emitter or something. It's not very distinct on camera, but it looks like there's some kind of light guide in there so this might shoot light out and this part's loose now i think that's what was screwed in on the bottom and i wonder if it'll slide out like i said some amazon engineer is watching this going you jackass this is not at all appropriate um it kind of twisted in there it's not wanting to come out i mean there might be more to it behind it that's not going to fit through that hole anyway and now that i'm looking at the molding Oh, there's screws. Ah, there's screws buried in these holes. 
and I'm guessing there's more around the whole front of the unit. So I'm guessing this, I don't think this is glass. This sounds like plastic. So I'm guessing behind this plastic cover, there are more screws and this is probably also glued on. And yeah, this, this appears very much like it's gonna be a one-way trip. You know, let me take out these screws. Maybe it's something as dumb as like these screws need to come out and then the whole thing will just come apart. Yeah, okay, it's, it's definitely screwed on all the way around because now the bottom sort of will shift a bit away from the, so the front and back aren't glued together. They're just screwed, but the screws are presumably under this crap. See, so, yeah, I think I'll keep going with the heat. And hope that gets me somewhere. Now, oh, please don't secretly be glass. Oh, it's glass. Fine. It really had more of a plasticky feel and it was very flexible in the front. But that is definitely glass. Well, shit. Well, yeah, like I said, this is going to be a one way trip. So, to avoid shattering more glass everywhere, this is 3M like furnace tape. It's rated up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so I can still apply the heat gun to it and hopefully it'll stay stuck on there and keep the glass in place. It's also very expensive tape, but uh, it should work well for this application. And what I'm gonna do is just tape around the edge because presumably I will be cracking more of this glass as I pry at it and uh, this way I won't be getting glass particles everywhere the tape will hopefully contain it all I don't know if this is the recommended way of dealing with this and like I said you know if you're like well I guess if you're a cell phone repair person because this is probably a very similar concept you wouldn't mind breaking the customer's screen as you took it off, right? Because you'd be replacing it probably with a new piece of glass, I assume. So I don't know if this is a common way to deal with this in that industry, but uh, hey, look at that. All right. Now that I know it's glass, I can also apply more heat than I was otherwise doing. I mean, I'm really getting the heat gun in there, like right up close. This is going to get very hot and potentially melt some of the plastic around the sides. But at this point, as I said, this is going to be a one-way trip for this device. Okay, that is extremely hot now. Eh, it's kind of budging. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, it's also cracking, but like it just broke here. But okay. I mean, I also feel kind of stupid like I'm missing a trick for this. Okay, so I've made a severe error in judgment here. Um, With my hammer. It appears that I thought I was just removing the glass cover from this, but I was actually removing the glass cover and the LCD screen, which is now uh, completely screwed. So uh, yeah, you can see there's the cables that were attaching it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to cut this one because that ain't going back together because this screen is completely cracked. Yeah, I really messed that one up. Um, you can see I've delaminated the entire LCD screen. Like, yeah, that's it. So that's, uh, that's gone. This thing is never going back together again. Oh, tell me there's no more screws on this and the rest of this is just hooks. Ugh. Okay, now I really do want to hear from the Amazon engineer that's laughing at me. I mean, mind you, this this seems like a colossal waste, but I don't have kids. I wasn't planning on using this device. Um, I was kind of hoping to keep it in, you know, usable condition just to mess around with it some more. But um, I only bought this in order to test it out briefly and then tear it down for YouTube. So, you know, this isn't a huge loss for me. 
And when buying stuff like this to do teardowns for YouTube, I always know there's a chance that it may go wrong and this may not and the item may never go back together again. So uh, this isn't really as tragic as it might seem. It's just slightly unfortunate. It looks like it's just snapped in, but... Yep, I'm stupid. I only need to remove the glue on the over the speaker grill and uh, the rest of this just would have snapped apart without even too much effort. So yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. Um, so yeah, there's a circuit board and there's some connections to the... Oh, actually, this thin cable here goes to that diagnostic port or whatever it is on the back. Just going to disconnect that. And then... Oh, there's actually a fan in here. Okay. Then there's a uh, cable that maybe goes up to the fan or goes up to something else. Well, there's a cable here anyway that goes to the other end of the unit. And then, no, this is the fan, I believe. Pull that out. This thing's still holding this together at the top. And it looks like it might be another circuit board. Like, I'm not sure if I have to take the housing for the projector off first. No, no. It looks like there was some glue or some sonic welding just at the very tip top of this. But, okay, there we go. Well, now it's in two halves. Completely ruined. But, uh, well, actually, the latches that hook it together aren't ruined at all. So if I had just uh, been more patient with the prying... Well, anyway. So you can see it. There's a um, squirrel cage type fan. Presumably blowing air out. And through this grill here. And then, weirdly, this wire, I guess, to prevent vibration against the case, is covered in some kind of foam. As is the power input cable. That's this which goes to the power jack on the back. And uh, I'm actually not sure what this cable's for, because this is definitely the fan right here. And this one just goes under this housing. So let's open that housing up and see what we can see. Well, at least I don't have to remember which screw goes where, because this is not going back together again. Yeehaw. Well, at least my incompetence might save someone else some money when they go to disassemble theirs so they don't completely just smash the LCD screen to bits uh, for their own amusement. Ah, how silly of me. Okay, this is the power input cable. It just happened to loop under that protective cover for some reason. I don't know why. This fell out of the bottom. This is what was screwed to the bottom when I um, took out those five torque screws. Um, this is just a weight. It feels like a piece of steel with screw holes machined in it. So this is just to give the base weight in the back. It, that went right here. So that's what came loose there. The other thing that was in the front, um, there is one more thing of note actually on this back piece. There is a circuit board up here and there are holes in the case up there. I'm guessing that's a phased microphone array. Um, oh yeah. Okay, so there's a the cable that connects that to the motherboard. Here on this end of the cable, it says 2MLB, which I'm guessing is main logic board, maybe. Um, and then the other end of it, it's going to be hard to see for you guys, I'm afraid. But the other end of that cable, it says 2MIC. So this is definitely the microphone array at the top. Um, there's the circuit board. So it looks like you have to remove the fan to get to the four screws to take that apart. But we'll get to that later. I think what we all want to see, shit, I think what we all want to see is the uh, main thrust of this unit. This is the module at the bottom where I said it looked like there was some kind of light guide. And indeed, it looks like maybe these two flexible cables, flat flex cables, power an LED emitter and receiver, maybe? To get reflections back to determine where on the mat the kid is poking their finger. And there's a small circuit board there with a couple of big ass resistors, which are probably current limiting resistors for. Oh, these might be infrared LEDs. Maybe the camera can see infrared, whereas we can't. So it can determine 
where this beam is getting blocked by, like where there's a shadow on the mat. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just speculating. I will dive into this further and we'll see if we can see anything of interest. So here's the main board, of course. Uh, big heat sink. We'll see what's under there. And then this looks like the heat sink for the LED for the projector, I'm guessing. And uh, I actually feel kind of better that I destroyed the, the uh, LCD in the front. Because now if I destroy anything else on this, it's like whatever. Yeah, they put some of these cables or just clad in foam. I'm guessing this is the speaker cable because that just goes under there and the, the speaker's down here. And this is probably... Actually, I don't know. There's a lot of cables here. I mean, I'm sure at least one is related to the camera data. One's related to projector data. This seems like a lot of pins for projector power, but see, there's one big flat flex and then there's another one at an angle next to it. And there's one going under here. Are these labeled on the board, maybe? No. This flat flex cable has a little chip and some support components on it. That's interesting. It's actually more like a uh, flexible circuit board. And it's got a piece of... It looks like heat sink pad, but it's probably more like a heat a thermal protective pad, an insulator to prevent this heat sink from overheating this flat flex cable and from abrading against it, I'm guessing. And this whole, I don't know if it's aluminum or magnesium or some kind of alloy uh, sub-assembly. So I'm going to just try to take this entire thing off. And this is probably the projector and overhead camera in one. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Looks like we actually have two cameras. This one has sort of a larger lens over it, unless that's an emitter. Hmm. And in the middle, I guess, is the projector lens. Actually, I kind of wish I hadn't destroyed this now so I could freaking power it up and see. Is this DLP? Maybe that's why I was getting those rolling lines along the image of different, uh, slightly different colorations because there are red, green, and blue cables here. And then this cable splits off three ways. So that could be red, green, and blue that then gets switched in one at a time for the DLP chip to uh, aim stuff where it goes. All right, we'll get back to this module later. But uh, yeah, quite robust. And then before it's completely apart, um, this is the shutter open and close mechanism. Very smooth little mechanism. I like that. Very simple, but uh, effective. And so this, you can see there's that window there that covers that camera. I mean, you can see actually how much of a disaster I made of this. Like, there's just shards of glass everywhere now. But anyway, if I open and close the shutter, you can see it behind that broken glass. Uh, but, and that's this part moving up and down there. So, yeah. Very simple mechanism, but uh, quite effective. I like it. Now, the weird thing is, so up here, this covers one camera. So if this is the mechanism in place like this so the mechanism would go in like that or not the mechanism the projector and camera sub-assembly so this would block that camera with a little pinhole aperture but it does not block this camera which appears to have some sort of filter in there and i kind of adjusted the image up a little um it's rather hard to see because it's black on black but um there's a little window right there, which is completely invisible on this side. So that's probably an infrared camera, I'm guessing, maybe. OK, now as for the main board, I am very curious to see what's under this heat sink. So let me dive into that and get heat sink compound all over the place this time instead of broken glass. So far, there have been three sizes of torque screws in here. All right, well, at least the heat sink came off smoothly and it's not, there's no heat sink compound everywhere because they used heat sink pads. Why does this camera look so shitty? So yeah, we've got heat sink pads here and then sort of conductive padding here, which lines up with these shields. 
so that it all gets nicely shielded. And then this, I believe, yeah, it's just another shield under there. Which doesn't look to be soldered, so hopefully I can pry it off. But we remember how well it went when I pried stuff off last time. Nonetheless, small flathead bit. And let's see if this will pop. I don't know why this one's super shielded. And in a different manner than the other ones. Like, as opposed to using the heat sink for shielding. Okay, yeah, it's going to come off. It's not soldered on there, at least. Ah. And yet more heat. So it's heat sink pad going to uh, shield, going to more heat sink padding. So I wonder what the thermal conductivity of that stuff is. Ooh, there is an empty BGA slot, slot BGA uh, socket. I don't know. There's pads for it right there for another chip that's unpopulated. This, I'm going to guess, is the main CPU. It has a very indistinct part number. I'm going to have to... I think these shields are soldered on, so I'm not going to be able to remove those, but that's okay because we can pretty much see what's going on here. Um, I'm going to have to clean some of this heatsink compound off that like sort of migrated off of these pads because these are very gummy pads this capacitor looks a little bit bowed at the top uh, maybe not mm. maybe ever so slightly so yeah i guess let me uh liberate the circuit board so i can more easily put it under the microscope all right, it's still one of the same three sizes of torque screws to get this board out, but it's yet a different kind of screw. Oh no, we've used these screws before somewhere. Okay, they reuse this type of screw. But there are a decent number of uh, screws here as far as types go. And if I was ever planning on putting this thing back together, well, that would be important to keep track of, but I'm not. And besides, it's on video, I guess, so I could figure it out if I really needed to. Oh, <laughs> this was the uh, cable I cut that went to that diagnostic board on the other side. All right, so the board she has liberated, it's a very thin board. I mean, it looks like maybe millimeter, millimeter and a half thick. And it's got a lot of RF pads, which go where? Oh, these actually stick through these holes in the case and they butt it up against the back of the LCD, which is all metalized on the back, as you can see. And so presumably that back of the LCD is used for shielding. And so the ground plane is just conductively coupled via all these pads to that LCD screen's uh, aluminum backing. It looks like there's a lot of like test points on here. So presumably in the factory, maybe this is just slapped on a jig and tested before it's put into the units. I assume that's what those pads are for. Well, yeah, let's take a look under the microscope. No, actually, you know what? Before I bust the microscope out, um, let's dig into this module. Why not? Because then there might be things in here we want to look at under the, uh, under the microscope more carefully. Okay, so there's some bracket here. I guess let me get rid of that. Looks like it's structural. I mean, I'm guessing it's structural. It doesn't look like it's supposed to couple heat because there's such a small little tab there on the other side. See, a lot of different types of screws. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if this sub-assembly was made by a different company that made then made the rest of the unit. Differing screws are kind of a clue to that. There's a lot of screws everywhere on this thing. So let's see, this, this cable here attaches here with a bunch of screws. Okay. Let's see what's in there. Oh, is that the DLP chip? That's probably the DLP chip. It uh, it was seated in here like that, and then there's a lens behind there. And via that lens, you can see my hand here, which actually kind of kind of is in focus. So that's the projector path. Well, let's open up this cover. May reveal the beam path more accurately 
And if you're planning on keeping this unit and using it in the future, this would probably be unwise to open because if this does reveal the whole beam path, then getting dust in here would probably be a really bad thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can see all the optics in there. Ooh, that's cool. Look at that. Yeah, so dichroic glass, I'm guessing, to reflect certain wavelengths of light and pass others. So yeah, it's got to be like... Ooh, I wish I could power this up. Can I power this up? I suppose I could. That might wait till tomorrow. So let me not... Hmm. I'm kind of changing plans as we go here, but maybe I won't take this apart just yet completely. And, um... Yeah, even though the DLP chip, I won't, you know, I won't be able to get that to do anything functionally. It could still sit back in there as a reflector. And we could see the light emitted from these LEDs. I mean, I'm assuming, like I said, I'm assuming LEDs with 1, 2, and 3. I don't know which are which. Uh, I guess I could see what light this is passing. And so I'm guessing blue, red, and green. But we could prove that out later by applying power to this. I'm assuming this is just power going straight to the LEDs. There's no circuitry in between. So if I just provide a voltage to this, it should provide a voltage to the LEDs. So yeah, we'll mess around with that. All right, hopefully I did a good enough job with the rubbing alcohol to get this board nice and clean. And uh, now let's take a look at it under the trusty microscope. Yeah. Okay, so this is a MediaTek ARM chip. Let's see what the specs of this are. Okay, this chip seems to be a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. Not a processor at all. Well, it's a processor. It's just very specially made for this purpose. And here's some specifications. So this is what the Amazon Glow is capable of. Okay, moving down the board and to the left... We got this chip. This is an IIA77 or 11A77D9XGR. Let's take a look at that. All right, well, I couldn't find anything on this Micron chip. Uh, maybe someone knows what it does. If you do know what it does, please leave a message in the comments below. Maybe I just missed something. And we'll go from that to the next chip down which needs to be turned uh, this way okay this is a qualcomm sda 660 okay this is a system on a chip and i do not think still this is the main cpu but it features eight 64-bit cores divided into two clusters and it looks like it's focused on video and ai oh yeah it's got a built-in video processor Location, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. Interesting. AI engine. Interesting. So this is probably, well, undoubtedly has to do with the image processing coming in from the camera that's probably pointing at the projector image and at the child's hands and items they put there. Okay, moving down to the next chip in the line. This one I'm going to have to leave sideways because I can't rotate the board. It won't fit in there. But this is a SanDisk chip, which probably means it's flash storage. Yeah, it says 16G on it. Yeah, SanDisk, then a part number, dash 16G. So that's going to be a 16 gig. Actually, I'm not sure if that's gigabit or gigabyte. All right, well, this is just a Mauser uh, page for the 64 gig version of this. So it looks like it is 64 gigabytes in this case. So the dash 64G means gigabytes, not gigabits. And therefore the 16G is going to be 16 gigabytes. That's just 16 gigs of flash storage. Moving on over, we got a tiny chip over here. All right, so this is a DLP chip. So let's see what that reveals. All right, that little guy is a Texas Instruments DLP chip and applications mobile projector indeed, or Pico projector, which I guess is what's integrated into this thing. So you can see some of the specs there. Uh, 
And for more details, of course, you can look this up at your leisure. Now then, up here above that in this orientation is another Texas Instruments DLP chip. There's a TI logo. And I'm not sure. Yeah, DLP A3000D. Let's look it up by that. Pulled up another nice data sheet. Ah, so this is the high current LED driver. Okay, that's why it has that metal heatsink pad in the middle. I would imagine. Okay, so this actually drives the LEDs. Interesting. And there's a cool block diagram here. Because one thing I need to know if I'm going to drive those LEDs with a bench power supply is what kind of voltage and current they're supposed to draw. All right, so there's the block diagram for those of you that are interested in such things. Anywho, moving along, we got this chip here, another Qualcomm. Might as well turn that right side up and adjust the LEDs to get good contrast on there. Well, Qualcomm PM660. Okay, no data sheet right here on the first page. Let's see what this says. Okay, that looks like the chip. I see for Redmi Note, blah, blah, blah. Uh, power IC. Mm. Not very informative. All right, well, best guess is it is a power management IC. Well, cleaning the chip made that a lot clearer, but it is a PM660. This is be satisfied with that, I suppose. Then moving along this way on the board. You run into another Qualcomm 660 uh, 660L. Well, worth a look up. Okay, no data sheet, but it's coming up as a power IC once again. And no, not much data on the actual piece there, but power management IC, clearly. And that is really it for the major chips on the board. So just to review, this is the DLP controller chip. This is another DLP chip that controls the LEDs and is a high current driver for those. Well, okay, to be completely honest with you, I forgot what these chips are in which order. So I will display it here for you as to what all these chips are. And then just to review on the back of the board, we don't have any major ICs and some support components are well, pretty much everywhere, lots of capacitors and resistors and such, but nothing terribly exciting. It does say laser there, which is nice. Now, one more thing I'd like to look at under the microscope is this module that was underneath or at the very bottom of the Amazon Glow. And in fact, let me take this cover off and see what's under there. Uh, oh, there's another screw. There was another screw under the sticker I just punched through. Okay, that's why it wouldn't come off. And there we go. It looks like we have two emitters of some kind, either LEDs or possibly laser modules, because it did say laser on that board. So I'm just wondering if maybe these are lasers that get their beams spread out by these light guides or lenses, I suppose. Well... Let's see if any of these little chips reveal anything under the microscope. Now, these are very tiny chips. I'm going to take a guess that this is nothing too cool because it only has eight pins. But let's look it up anyway. Yeah, okay. Searching for this did not reveal much. And next to that, we have a chip YUB1VD11. Ah, this is related to laser diodes, or at least... Laser diodes are coming up in that search result. So is drug testing, though, which I don't think it has to do anything to do with that. Okay, YUB1VD. Now, ours is 13, not X4. But that's the only one in this list. Laser diode 100 gigahertz. 112, 120 kilometers? Is that what that's saying? All right. Well, anyway, I would presume that has something to do with driving laser diodes. So those are probably laser diodes in the front. And let's just take a quick explore across this very thin board. See if we can find anything on that chip. Ah, light control IC chip, 12 pins. 
see if it looks like our chip. No, it does not. But light control IC does seem to jibe with what we're dealing with here. And we got a big power resistor, or at least big in the uh, context of SMD. And then if we go down past the chips we already looked at, there's just a lot of support components, another big fat resistor, transistor or MOSFET, whatever. Um, and that is it. There's a part number there, E142470. Could we be lucky in that this is a generic module? It's weird that it comes up as a webcam, even though I don't think uh, this is going to have anything to do with that whatsoever. Nope, that looks like just a generic webcam. It's just weird that it has the uh, part number for webcam on it, even though that's not what it is. No, well, there's a part number here that's actually called part number, so maybe that's what I should look at. No, it's not bringing back anything useful. What a shame. Well, in any case, I think we've deduced that these are laser diodes and they probably create some kind of interference pattern that the projector, or rather the camera next to the projector can see. So they're probably infrared. Again, just guessing here, just spitballing ideas. Um, if anyone knows for sure, based on any of this, uh, again, do let me know. For a second, I thought it was 3D printed with these lines on the bottom, but I don't believe it is. That's probably just from the molding process, but there's just a weird pattern on the bottom. Just thought I'd note that. Probably not relevant in any way. It is time to test the uh, projector module. And I have a lab supply here, which I'm going to use to feed voltage to these conductors here. And um, just for, well, I don't know if it's simplicity's sake or not, but I'm going to chop this off and just strip the ends of these wires so that I can feed voltage into them. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm fairly, I mean, it's pretty obvious that, well, or at least it should be the case that this is the uh, blue LED, the green LED, and the red LED, unless Amazon really mucked that up. Um, I'm not sure what the white conductors are for. but I'm assuming the black wires are common and I'm guessing they're doubled up just to double their current handling capacity because they're very thin wires. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just use thicker wires, but I guess they wanted to use a very small connector. Uh, that's beyond me, but I think uh, we'll chop this off, strip the ends. I'm going to see if I have continuity between each pair of wires. I think I will. And then uh, I will feed some voltage into it and we'll see what happens. And ordinarily, I wouldn't cut off this connector. I'd probably just put small wires in here and power it that way. But this thing is, uh, well, never going back together and never working again. So we'll call it a day for this device. I don't know what voltage these LEDs take. So I'm going to sort of sneak the voltage up as we go along. And we'll try out the blue one first, I suppose. Yep, that's between the two blue wires and the two commons that supposedly go with the blue wires. Yep, we got continuity there. Now I'm also wondering if all of these common wires are common together. I kind of doubt it. So I'm just going to strip one more of these. And we'll see if we get continuity from these commons to this common. No, okay, so each set of commons is specific to an LED, which makes sense because um, I'm sure they're just routed straight to the LED in there. So I'm just going to twist these together as best as possible. They're aluminum and very thin, so they're not really twisting. I'm going to hope that they did indeed make the black negative because that's how I'm going to hook this up. And I'm not going to current limit it on the supply. I'm just going to sneak the voltage up until we get some light. So let me turn the output on, and right now zero volts is selected. Okay, well, I tried to get the LED module to light up because I thought that would be fun, and uh, I, no, I just couldn't. Um, I busted out a bench power supply, tried hooking it up with a bunch of different values of resistors, and just trying to get the current right. And uh, this thing drew a lot of current and usually kicked in the current limiting on the supply, but 
emitted no visible light. And um, I pushed the voltage up way high because I wasn't sure how many LEDs might have been in series or in parallel or what the arrangement, like if, if there were multiple chips on each of these LED modules. So I pushed the voltage up and I think I blew out the red and blue channels and the green channel I never pushed too hard. So it still draws current, but it draws a hell of a lot of current and with various resistors and all sorts of other crap. I don't know. I just couldn't get this to light up, which is really unfortunate. And I apologize for that. But I do want to just really quick demonstrate the dichroic glass in case that interests someone. Um, it's perhaps a little too bright, but you can see if I shine the flashlight that way, you can see it's reflecting the yellow light and passing blue light through. And on this one, it's passing magenta and reflecting green. And if I go the other way, you can see passing magenta reflecting green. So I just thought that was kind of cool. It would have been much more fun to see with the LEDs lit up. Um, I think I generally screwed this entire tear down and experiment up. Um, most especially embarrassing is the LCD panel. Um, just in case you're wondering what was going through my mind, even though I kind of described it at the time, I was thinking of smartphones or tablets for that matter, where there's no screws and no way to open it up from the back. And the correct way to open it up is through the front. And usually that involves putting the phone or tablet on a hot plate, heating it up so that the glue that glues the front glass on softens and then you can pry it off or just comes off nice and easily. And then be, below that is the battery and all the circuitry. And so if you want to replace the battery, that's how you do it. If you want to replace the screen, again, that's how you would do it. And total red herring that this had two screws under the speaker grill which was partially glued and partially snapped in. I don't think I needed the heat necessarily because it was snapped in as well. So I could, probably could have just broken the adhesive normally, but um, it was unclear to me how this thing was held together. Of course, this was all a big experiment. And so I'm trying not to get broken glass everywhere because there is still there is still some broken glass around the edges here. But um, yeah, it turns out the only screws were down the bottom of the speaker grill. The rest were just snaps all along the side. If I had known that, I could have just unsnapped the whole unit and wouldn't have broken it, and I could put it back together, and it would work fine. But as it is, the case is ruined. The LCD panel is ruined because I actually bent the whole thing uh, pretty badly, and it delaminated, so that's not going to be usable. Again, it's possible I could buy a replacement um, just for your own edification. It does have these part numbers slash serial numbers printed on it. Looks like a manufacturing date of 2021-0824. So it is possible I could get this panel, but uh, the decorative cover glass that was on this is shot anyway. And so this is generally just kind of a useless hunk now because the board heavily relied on the touchscreen, or rather everything relied on the touchscreen to get it to work. So. So I could theoretically put it back together, connect it to the Wi-Fi, and probably the projector would work, uh, but I wouldn't be able to use the touchscreen at all. Don't know how useful that would be. Um, I think in the end, I pro and I probably broke the projector anyway by uh, pushing too much current through it. I feel kind of bad about the way this turned out. I didn't want to wreck this device, but like I said, this was more about making a YouTube video than actually having a device for me to use in my personal life, so hey, my uh, mistakes will hopefully edify someone else who wants to open this thing up and take a look around inside and possibly mod it to do something uh, different than it was originally intended. So that is the story, the very long and drawn out story of the Amazon Glow, which may or may not become available as a full product for everyone to buy. Um, like I said, I paid $250 for the privilege of being a beta tester which, okay, fine, whatever. I mean, it's kind of cool to get a sneak peek at some Amazon products. And generally, I do like their hardware. Their hardware is really cool. The utility of this, I'm dubious of. Because although it is cool, and I could definitely see kids enjoying playing with it, um, ultimately, it seems like way more of a faff than just having 
the kid use a tablet and the adult use a tablet and play the same games and stuff. I know you can't like scan stuff in and doesn't have the tactile enjoyment of using these like uh, Tengram bits. But when it comes down to it, is the kid really going to get that much more out of the physical interaction versus just using a tablet? I mean, let's face it, kids nowadays are using tablets at a tremendously young age. I mean, my like four-year-old niece, when she was four, or when she was three even, was using a tablet to play like little kid games and stuff and watch uh, kids' videos on YouTube. So, I don't know. I think this is more the kind of thing that kids are growing up with anyway. And it's not to say that kids shouldn't have physical interaction with objects and learn spatial awareness and stuff like that. I, I just don't think a $250 device that's needlessly complicated. And I, they, I feel like they have to be losing money on this. Like, I feel like there's more than $250 worth of design and parts in this. Am I wrong? What do you think? Um, I guess they could price out the individual components, but then there's stuff like, you know, the custom heat sink. Um, this custom projector camera module uh, from which a lens just fell out. Well, it is a cool product, and I do like it, and I think it's nifty. I don't know. My opinion is, and I guess time will tell, I don't see it being a huge seller, and I would wager in, if Amazon does release it to a general audience, I would wager either they change the focus of it completely or it disappears in a year or two. I have a really old and sort of horribly embarrassing video, well, not this isn't embarrassing, but of the Amazon Dash buttons, which I did use in real life and tried to incorporate into my daily uh, habits, but they just were really pretty useless in general because it seemed like they never had anything in stock that the button was used for, and when they did have it in stock, it was at a ridiculously inflated price. Anyway, I won't get into that now. Point is, they've discontinued the support for those buttons, I'm not saying I'm always right about these things. I just uh, I just get a, a feeling in this case. But enough rambling from me. Thank you for watching this far. I'm glad you made it. Um, don't forget to scribe and libe and um, whatever it's called. You can look me up on social media, Scott dot dot, just Alta Vista it, uh, or whatever your preference the search engine is. I'm just rambling at this point. But anyway, thanks for watching. See you later. I shouldn't break this tablet. Um, it's actually not that bad. Alright, um, we'll call that a video. I guess. Fuck it.